evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to all members of the public and councillors. Firstly, a brief health and safety introduction. We are not expecting a fire drill, but if the alarm does sound, please make your way to the nearest fire exit. The emergency exit at the back of the chambers will take you across the roof and down the fire escape. Take care, as this may be slippery if wet. Or you can exit the way you entered the building through the police station and out the front door. If it is not possible to get to an exit, then the lift lobby is a safety zone in the event of a fire. Under no circumstances should the lift be used, however. Please make sure that all mobile phones and devices are switched off or silenced. Any individuals wishing to record the meeting may do so from the seats reserved at the front of the public gallery. Please remember anyone wishing to speak in the public participation part of the meeting should raise their hand and wait for me as the chair to suggest that you to carry on. Thank you. Apologies and absence, absence and declaration to substitute members. Um, Councillor Hill, uh, in the course of their demand. Thank you. Disclosure of interest. To deal with any disclosure by members of any disclosable pecuniary interests and interests other than pecuniary interests as defined under the Seat of Town Council Code of Conduct and Localism Act 2011 in relation to matters on the agenda. Item number three, public participation. To deal with any questions or brief representations from members of the public in accordance with standing order three and seat of town council policy. <laughs> Item four, the financial report. To consider reports 54 stroke 16 to inform members of the Community Service Committee of income and expenditure for the period of August 2016 and the financial year to date, pages 2 to 8. Yes, yes. Um, I'm a bit puzzled by the item 4051, Crips. I understood that if they went to the self financing charity, we would not be paying the rates. That's right. And why is the sum down? Is it? Well, they haven't, they haven't taken over the lease they yet. Haven't. Okay. No. But Is that due to happen? Um, imminently. Uh, we've got the lease with solicitors at the moment yeah. uh, to finalise the detail of the lease um, in accordance with what they've expressed and also what we've wanted, and then mm -hmm. I'll go back to them to agree to, and then it'll be a final lease signed. So it's probably a couple of months away, but once it's all done, they can then apply for rates exemption. Right. But so they can't do it until they have the lease. Have we paid the rates for them for this year or what? Well we pay monthly, so we've paid right, them okay. pro rata at the moment. So yeah, we haven't paid beyond. Um, if we did if we did pay beyond we'll get a rebate anyway. Yeah. What about the other uh, expenses on the crypt? Um again they're all are they gonna be responsible for those in future? Yes. Or? Yeah. Yeah. They've taken over the administration side of it. Okay. So in the last three weeks. So um, the facilities uh, administration team were managing day to day the bookings, etc. Yeah. So Lynn has handed like that over. For the crypts, so right. right. yeah. uh, they've now handed that over. So that aspect in terms of the drawing our resource in the office has gone. It is just a case of once the lease is signed, okay. then we can pretty much do it completely. Right, thank you. But commonly, yeah, we will probably incur costs <coughs> over the next couple of months. about the sorts of ground maintenance monthly spend on the Globe Rail Act and when I compared it to last year it wasn't as high as last year. But my query was about the fact is I'm also working on a new fence in Chugate at the same rate. Feedback from the public is that they expect the park to be fully enclosed. What I wanted to know is why wasn't that initially put in the original design of the park that obviously people now want areas fully enclosed. So I'm just wondering why all the additional things are happening yeah. that weren't there in the first place. Um, I think it was the, the original designs were um, 
procurement by the former projects officer, and that was a point that we did raise that we weren't sure if it should be the way it is, and um, it was raised at the time that we should really be looking at fencing it off. And when we were in dispute with the contractor, um, we were looking at getting that bit fenced by them because of other problems in actually building what they were supposed to do properly. We didn't see it as a good move to get them to do it then, so we get somebody else to do it. Um, but it has been recognised. Major expense, but um, it is it is an oversight in my view. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think it is. Yeah, it, 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 you know, somewhere we would raise originally as a potential issue, and it's proved to be the case really. Okay. I think there's a there's a couple of work and operation elements in there as well. So once it's been put in, once you start realising the amount of people that are going to be there and where they're going to be situated within the park, I think that's then making us realise. You know, we do need to make it secluded. There's some other areas we need to make slightly safer. You know, the locations of picnic benches weren't necessarily in the right place, so it's just about trying to now manoeuvre it to make it as operationally friendly as possible for everybody that's in there. And I think feedback from the public's been very good in terms of how they found it when they go to it each day. So. Yeah, and I just wonder why. I mean, I'm not a parent, but I presume parents like the children to yeah. be closed. <laughs> <laughs> caged. <laughs> well, you know, no sort of. They can't just suddenly run off into the road or something. Yeah. I just wonder why that hadn't been dealt with. Yeah, it's just a design yeah. okay. issue at the beginning of the project, really. Have we paid for all of the work on the salt here? No, there's still a small retainer. I remember, uh, I remember signing two big checks, yeah. but yeah. Uh, there is still a small retainer there. Um, and the exact amount I can't recall. I think what, what happened is though is that we've actually had a lot more work than what we've paid for mm -hmm. done in there. There was obviously a huge amount of mistakes made by the contractor. Um, but to attempt to compensate for that, the, the soft pore areas, which is now a vast amount of, we haven't paid for any of that, just about, and that's really expensive. So there's somewhere in the region about 30, 35 thousand pounds worth of soft pore, which we haven't paid for. Okay. So that's been given us by way of compensation for the, the problems that caused us. So it is actually a superior variant to the one we ordered mm -hmm. eventually. It's just it was very painful to get to where we got to. And also, what about the problem with the dogs? And uh, it's always been a well known place for walking and exercising dogs. Um, is it still free for dog walkers to go through? Or? Dogs have to be in a lead in the area. The yeah. signage up saying that, um, but there is this problem with the open area, the dogs can just wander in because yeah. of the open side, so that is one of the weaknesses. Um, the, uh, I haven't seen, seen any dog fowl in there personally, I don't know if you've seen any crates. I've spent a lot of time there actually. Most dogs are pretty responsible with food, yeah, bags. That is one of the better areas of Seaford that I've found. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think as well there's a lot of self-policing there as well because it's so well used. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time, that dog owners will find it difficult enough to clean up if they did let the dogs in there, I think, most of the time. So, I've never seen any, in you know, all honesty, uh, in there. Um, but that's not safe as we have it here. Before I continue with that quickly, this may um, obviously recognise this evening that we have um, a new face on the uh, council manager. So, this is uh, Craig Williams, who is our new project facilities manager. Craig has a wealth of experience under his belt, including working for Hilton Hotels and the prestigious Penny Hill Park Hotel, where he oversaw several significant projects, including projects managing the construction of the England rugby training facility. Quite what he has done wrong in his um, working career so far, we don't know, but he's, um, he's ended up here. So we welcome, <laughs> <laughs> welcome Craig to our team, and um, we have high expectations that he delivers the best for our town. So um, welcome to Craig. Thank you very much. Um, you're kind enough to give us um, your uh, report. Okay, so yeah, obviously being here for three weeks so far, so I'm kind of finding my feet on you know, where my focus needs to be. You know, James and I have spent some time together on. Yeah, key areas that we need to 
you know, focus on straight away. Um, you know, I've obviously been uh, in and around the town trying to understand the areas and, and um, where our development opportunities are. So I've, I've spent a lot of time um, at the Salts, as we've discussed. That's why our expenditure is high for August, because there's been some immediate maintenance issues that have been raised uh, very quickly, and we've been very fortunate in that we've been able to carry out the repairs you know, very, very quick and in a timely fashion. So um, a lot of the um, a lot of time we've spent down there. Um, we're also working on obviously the iconic facility in terms of where how that's going to fit into our you know our strategic objectives and how we're going to look into next year. Um, obviously the two minute beach clean has been a focus as well. I'm sure we put a press release out for the two minutes that, you know, probably actually spent more than two minutes down there, I think. Um, you know, some councillors came and joined us as well. So I think the investment that was put in by the community service committee at the last meeting, I think is, is uh, I think showed down there. I think it is a much cleaner beach and obviously Don's on board at Frankie's Calf and Salvatore, etc. So I, I definitely think they're improving. Um, Montero Toilets is a big project that um, is top of my list. Um, pretty much as soon as we get the finances in place to, to do that, that will be um, pretty much the first project we roll with. I think we're all open about the fact that that needs um, some significant investment. So we're talking through you know, potential opportunities, development plans, how, you know, what's the best. You know, is, it, is it best to knock it down and start again? Is it best to refurbish what's there? You know, trying to make it as user friendly as possible again. So you could, you know, build items into it, extra storage. We do struggle in town with storage, so um, yeah, plans are sort of going to be heading through the winter on that. Um, the Martello Tower itself. Um, some of you have obviously discussed with briefly about what's happening down there, but we do have a, an issue with the structure. So um, we had um, some concrete specialists and structural engineers down there through August that have basically given us some recommendation that they. Uh, remove all of the loose debris from the ceiling, um, bag that and get rid of it, and then um, send in a servo specialist that will give us a complete understanding of what the problems are down there. Once we've got that, we'll then be in a position to be able to say, okay, what does what needs to be done? Where can we pull the finances from, and what's the scope of works in the time frame for it? Um, currently, that's a bit of an unknown because we, you know, you can only visually see that there's cracks and damages and parts of the ceiling falling down. It may just be aesthetics. It's the concrete that's broken rather than the actual structure. So until that's carried out, uh, we don't know. That is happening actually on the 22nd and 23rd now, rather than the 21st and the 22nd. Um, they changed our museum. Our <coughs> so, um, so yeah, hopefully by the end of next week, we'll have a, a full report on, on where we're gonna go. Uh, Greenkeeper Shed, a uh, very exciting project for the Greenkeepers up there, they're very excited. Um, we obviously allocated 35000 for that over the course of um, this year. So that project's going to begin in October, uh, it's a six week project, it's all been costed um, and the programme of work was put together, so um, that's basically going to be a removal for a week, installation for four weeks and then um, commission certification in the last week. Um, yeah, that will give them a very usable um, space then, because obviously the one up there leaks quite badly. Um, we are looking at potentials of solar paneling up there as well. So at the moment it's early stages, um, so there's opportunities to try and utilise the area for the Greenkeeper Shed and maybe using some of that power for the view. So it could reduce costs you know, up there, because we know there is, a, there is an energy consumption cost at the view company, so we're trying to work with the designers on how best to, to use that. And there's no cost on solar power systems nowadays, so it's just a, an income. Uh, concessions, um, South Bill Barn feedback has been fantastic for the first six to eight weeks. They, they've had a bit of a challenge with their um, caravan, shall we call it? <laughs> with their caravan that they serve from. Um, so they haven't served as much in the last two weeks as they would like, but they are working on uh, plans to, to get that repaired or um, put onto you know, a different truck to, to make it you know, a lot more solid. We are also working on uh, having the front barn doors usable so we can lock it away just for, for safety of that vehicle as well, just so people can't get damage it or break into it. 
and obviously they got their, their five star food hygiene rating, which I think was great as well. You know, their, their first event, you know, their first concession in that sort of way, and five star straight away, which is a great, a great sign. And they're very keen to be part of Seaford Town as well. Aren't they? They're, very, they're obviously from Worthing, but they're very keen to be part of what Seaford does, so they're happy to be involved in events and, and, and things as well. Um, events upcoming, um, obviously Christmas magic will be here before we know it. So um, our, our big focus from Emily and myself is to, to kind of get that event managed, um, get it to the best, get it done to the best of our ability. Unfortunately, we've obviously lost a lot of information over the, the course of this year. So we, we lost Rachel, uh, we obviously lost Ben, a couple of the committee members that have been in it previous years aren't in it. So yeah, it's kind of a refreshing eye that we'll look at it probably from a slightly different uh, perspective, but we'll try and make it as exciting and fun and, um, uh, and as good as possible. So we're on target in terms of lighting schemes <coughs> and have all been ordered. Um, we're just working through the stall bookings and the entertainment bookings. Entertainments are looking very good. We've got some very good people in this year um, and some other opportunities to do something a little bit different in terms of some classical music, some violins, etc. that we were discussing on Tuesday. Um, filming has been very good as well. Um, we took two very quick inquiries um, in the space of a week. Uh, which totaled over two thousand pound in revenue. Uh, yeah, thirteen fifty for one day, which is the um, the up by the library. You know the um, the home that they're building there. They wanted to do some advertisement around town, so they used the crouch. They were due to use the crypt, seafront, and pop into some areas in town. Um, so they they did that for the day, uh, facilitated by us, and yeah, that was a very good income. Um, and then the other one was uh, just down on the seafront, which need no work from us. They just need a certificate of they could use the seafront, so no administration costs. So that was purely an income, which mm -hmm. yeah, was fantastic. And then unfortunately, we um, we did say goodbye to Len um, last week, well, two weeks ago now. Um, and we are progressing with the recruitment of a new inspection role. So the inspector um, will do something very, very different to what Len did. So there'll be our eyes and ears in the town, so they'll be out monitoring, maintaining, proactively approaching maintenance and problems within the town rather than reacting to breakdowns and situations. Um, we were quite shocked with the level of candidate that we got. We were expecting someone of a certain standard and we've been amazed with the, how good the candidates have been. So we're talking people at degree level, diploma level, in health and safety, uh, consultancy, mm -hmm. management, um, so we've narrowed it down to two people and we'll be making that decision tomorrow. So um, hopefully we'll, yeah, we'll probably announce that in due course, mm. but we're excited about either. I, I think both of them are doing a fantastic job for us. Okay. Um, you were, <laughs> see that's two people. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, feel, I, think, I think we're in a very good place. Um, I'm obviously trying to find my feet as quick as possible. Um, and then, yeah, but we'll hopefully have a bigger development plan and understand of where we're going forward at the next. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks to Craig for your input on the chat that was having with the musicians no on Tuesday. That was very, very positive, and I just wanted to look looking forward. Two points I want to inquire about. Martello Toilet, toilets, what's the anticipated project for that? Um, it's, it's going to be be 80 to 100,000. It is, it is a lot of money. Um, that's why we're trying to utilise it for as much as possible. So can can we get you know storage space in there for you know, the bandstand, for the music area by Montello Tower? Can we get the kiosk in there? Obviously the kiosk that's there is quite small, isn't of the best condition. So could we build that and into it? And the lifeguards as well. So is there opportunities within that building to have four or five different areas, which makes it then actually an income because the concession then is going to be giving us an income. So there is a small return on investment then. Second point is about the um, Greenkeeper's Shed. Yeah. I can thoroughly recommend several panels. We've had them, one not for hot water and a second not for electricity. The second that we had about six years ago, and they've been performing 25% above 
The good thing about it nowadays is that there isn't a huge investment into it. They, they practically give you them for, for free, and they just take a percentage of what they produce. Oh, we we so, pay for ours and get all. Yeah, it's, it's just about weighing up what, what's the best return. So, so we're actually selling back electricity back to the grid. A portion of it, yeah. So we'll obviously reduce our costs 75%, mm -hmm. but yeah, we'll pay 25% back to them, which would then you know, accrue their money back. So it's it's a significant investment for both parties, from us and from. Have you also thought about solar panels on top of the toilets in our town? Yes. Yep. Absolutely. I fully say, get them wherever you can. <laughs> with definite, solar, with solar, a definite convert. Solar panels on the Martello would be perfect because it'd be a south-facing roof. The garden shed is an east and west-facing roof, yeah. so it doesn't produce quite as much energy. But the toilets, especially on the beach, you know, uninterrupted sunlight. Mm -hmm. They would be a perfect opportunity, and we'd hope, or I would hope, on the initial calculations I've done, that that toilet would run solely on solar panels Good. and have no no other power supply. Just, just a remark: the new the new solar panels only need daylight. They don't matter what way they face. Okay. Seems better. Yeah. <laughs> just going to say that I presume when the toilets have been whatever happened to them there will be alternatives around that area because obviously there's now the toilets that end of town. Mm. I think we've got to give some thought to how we manage it. I thought it otherwise fit. the next lot is the buckle car park or yeah. the ones I've seen in town that's something town, yeah. that end. It isn't. It's, um, the only alternative we could really provide would be parking those. Um, that would be an added cost to the project to have them there because if you look at it a period of several months that's what I was thinking, and then obviously those toilets are quite well used, aren't they? Well, I, I'm not so sure they are. Um, yeah, because feedback, they are used, don't get me wrong, mm. but feedback from a lot of the people I've spoken to on the seafront when I've been doing some research is that they tell the kids they're not toilets and they won't go in them because they're so bad. I don't know if you've been in them recently. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, they're, they're disgraceful, ago. actually. Um, but you, know, you just, they're just sort of used with yeah, I know, but, but there's a lot of parents who won't take the children in them because they're so bad uh, from people who were at the cafe and I was talking to them. Um, they're not great at all. So uh, what impact they have, I don't know, but we could look at this. It would be an added cost to, to provide part of those. Um, over that period of time, it's probably not a lot, but you know, probably be three or four thousand more if you do take the toilets, because you have to have quite a few. Um, that would be one option to look at. It depends on how much funds are available and what the prices come in as well for the, the actual works. You know, we've, mm -hmm. we've, we're estimating them all, what it's going to cost. Um, but it is a broad estimate at the moment. So, and of course, uh, this is all subject to the council agreeing on its next council to, to, to some of the land sales that we've been consulting on. Mm -hmm. um, we've, had, we've had positive feedback on that. The public are in agreement with the selling of some of the land. Um, so, hopefully, the council agree with that. to have the toilets built and ready for the summer next year. Right, okay. What we don't want to do is have the delay that will make that very difficult to get them in place. We really want to get them there for some holidays. Mm. The only problem with that is um, sometimes when you have an event in the Martello fields, they don't provide toilets, and the Martello tower ones are the only ones mm. they use. Mm. So it is quite a problem if they're so, you know, taken away for a I think the idea would be um, to try and do the work, you know, after Christmas up until the spring. So a lot, of, a lot of the big events are kind of mm -hmm. through the summer and the spring. That's why we, we want to get them up and running, ready for that. So if we could, you know, make decisions on where would we go with it very quickly, we, we could then, you know, start getting together the information that we need over sort of October, November, December, um, ready for the works to start straight away and then hopefully it won't have too much of an impact. Obviously boot sales don't start till April, you know, and most of the events down there will be in the summer. Yeah. So it will still be a tight project and maybe we'll look at maybe from April just having it for the last part if if it's a project that runs from January to May, maybe the last month having four to do's there. 
to obviously deal with the extra football that you'll have down yeah. down there, and then costs won't quite be as high because it's only one month rather than five months. So it, it, yeah, it's a design and, and process. It's kind of in our heads. Yeah, so we need to we need to start getting things down on paper and start getting. You think it's not? Is the building actually sort of structurally sound? No, yeah. it's not. That's why we, we we're evaluating whether it's worth yeah. repairing what's there. We wouldn't knock it down just for the sake of it. It's yeah. because of the amount of remedial works to make it structurally sound. You know, it's been left out to the elements for however many years that it's been down there. And then, you know, there's been smashed windows where obviously the, the gales, uh, there's damp coming in, there's leaking roofs, there's you know, yeah. umpteen amounts of issues. So. We've been with the guys before, I'm sure, for like four or five months. If we've got that, you would be able to find a small business company that might just think, oh, actually, that's not a we can negotiate a deal with them anyway. I'm sure you Yeah. Well, we hire a, um, a toilet up at Southfield Barn, so yeah. we try and use those contacts to yeah, so we we try the best deal that we possibly could um, in that sense. You know, I, and I appreciate it, it probably sounds like a lot of money for a toilet, but that's why we're trying to utilise it for as much as we can and mm. uh, you know save money elsewhere. No, the the the, the clean up service. Oh, it's their responsibility uh, to know the way the system works, but they don't they wouldn't contribute probably towards the capital costs. Yeah. I'll just briefly come back to the uh, green sheet shed. Yeah. Thirty five thousand. It's uh, seems like a lot more. Read a little bit of social media before I come out this evening, <laughs> and people have remarked on on the cost mm -hmm. of that. Um, but I mean, perhaps we should have given a little bit more detail here as to why we're um, doing these um, repairs. You know, in the long run, it's security and saving money and mm -hmm. equipment getting out. Just, just a note. I thought it's probably I think, I think the, the probably I, I've never used the phrase "greenkeeper's shed." I call it "greenkeeper's barn" because it's a barn. <laughs> it's not a shed. Yeah. I think the toilet bar. Yeah. <laughs> no, we talk about a structure that's that's um, off the top of my head. It's about fifteen four, by nine. Was it fifteen, 15 meters? Meters by nine. Meters. So, so you're talking, it's you're yeah. talking it's huge. Forty-five yeah. feet by twenty-seven feet. It's a it's big building, and so it's what's kept in there? all the machinery. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's all the machinery. It's the workbench. It's the workstation for doing the repairs because we do a lot of our own repairs there. The, the green, uh, green keepers are qualified mechanic. Just, just to note there, perhaps it might be better to say that in the eventually the uh, neutral, it will be cost of cost of neutral, the uh, energy we can get this um, solar panel well, at not, some point. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not just that. I mean, the original report, there's an original report on this when the council agreed to build a new green keeper's shed or barn. Yeah. Um, and the original report, the reason why we're doing it is that the, the barn's been condemned. It's, it can't be it can't be repaired. The the structure of the barn is um, I think it's about forty year old, um, and it's so corroded the uh, the framework yeah, that the framework the framework can't be replaced. Um, so we've patched it and put it together, and it's basically held it together with gaffer tape at the moment. It's got to the point where it just can't be repaired anymore. In one big gale, it'll probably end up in Blatchett, and then when it's the dead goes past. Sorry to jump around again, uh, 1.1 for the uh, results as well. And another thing that's come on social forums um, pages and that is the iconic facility. Actually, from what I'm understanding, it's quite a large number that don't want anything changed. It's just like to see a refurbishment of the cafe itself that's there rather than actually changing the whole thing. I mean, uh, these things should, should be spread back to the city council perhaps and um, taken on board. You know, I mean, I know people don't like change, but you know, it's a perfectly good building there and it's just brought up to date. And tidied up, you know, the money could be spent better elsewhere and just left as it is. Um, obviously, that's just, just but um, that, that would support. be something the council would consider when that uh, iconic project's brought back before the council. Um, where it is a strategic policy of both Lewis District and Seaford to have an iconic facility there at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, both councils have adopted that as the way forward. The main reasons being that um, if we're going to increase the levels of services at the, the building at the seafront, uh, and in the park, the building has to be a different building. That one can provide a restaurant and a cafe, as well as um, storage areas for the park and for other facilities for the park. If you're going to go by social media, the one thing that you see on social media more than most things, apart from dog dead, is why haven't we got a, a venue on 
the sea front. That's exactly what it's going to provide. It's going to have a sea front restaurant. It's losing a little bit of a story of gas in it. Yes, well, it is. Yeah, think, yeah. Think it it is that side things. of things, but um, it is it is a it is a good step in the direction of having a sea front um, facility. It would be interesting uh, thing when it comes to conservation. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> And then um, just to come back to the uh, Tinny Beach thing, it's brilliant. I mean, down there today and that, I've seen a lot of people over the last few days um, actually getting involved with this, which is really encouraging for everyone. And I um, just wondered if we can approach the District Council and get some of the um, bins down on the seafront and get them straight back with the Tinny Beach thing on so actually they become more involved. I don't know if that's going to probably be, but just leaving the stickers on there. It'll brighten up the bins and show the bins where they are. And maybe go as far as actually having the hand grabbers there by the bins. Um, for people to use along just in like, Well, that is, a, that is a very bad product, but you know, they are only a couple of pounds, um, and to be fair, the ones that are there all day aren't sort of manned, um, perhaps we just look into it. No, no harm yeah. and, uh, we can look at it, but we've already, we have had some go missing already. I think that's yeah. Good. yeah, and that's where the next to the kiosks, I think that's why we don't need to be near the kiosks, in all honesty. Okay. The downside is that you, you did some bit of picking, we did some as well. Um, I did some again the other week, and, and actually the area within sort of 50, 60 yards of the kiosk yeah. is now clear of litter. Mm -hmm. So you can spend ages looking for one bit, but if you go 100 yards, suddenly you get the litter again. So there is a big area in between the two kiosks that hasn't been done. That's what I wondered about. So it's a valid ones. point, but it's, it's the police, not the, uh, the issue. Maybe it's the kiosks need to encourage people to, to walk a bit further. Or invite schools to come down perhaps and get involved in projects which will really encourage youngsters who are you know, not getting contaminated with the grabs and that sort of support. Well, it is, I think it's nice that they've adopted it at some of the concessions as well. So, like itself, at one, they, they promote promoting their own recyclable materials. Um, they go around every morning picking, you know, um, people have picnics up there, so they pick some of the um, litter out of the trees so, and they get people involved in that. So, I think it's good.